So because I film my artworks from start to finish, it's very easy to pinpoint the exact moment when the mistake was made. And I wanna show you guys when that mistake was and well, what happened next. <laughs> in Italy and I was looking at the artworks there one thing that I actually noticed was the way that a lot of the masters would that have an extreme amount of detail but they would almost frame each element so that when you looked at it um, like even the roof I don't know it's probably hard to see of this even the roof of this they had elements that were broken up and framed so that when you sit back and you look at these incredible ceilings, it's not too overwhelming to look at. And so with this illustration and looking at my past works and, and the style that I've taken, I'm trying something different by creating almost like subframes that make the artwork sit on top of it and give it a little bit of structure. So I've decided to use a fluorescent orange in little parts of the hair um, so it'll almost appear like uh, his hair's glowing but what I'm going to do is just... moment when I made the first mistake the biggest mistake of this illustration and I, I almost thought about not even bringing it up and just saying this was planned um, straight from the beginning um, but obviously I wouldn't be being true to, to what this whole journey has been like and at this point being honest I thought I had really just destroyed the artwork and and I, w I, I couldn't figure out how to actually go back and improve all these weeks of work of illustrating the two characters with a white background i almost thought i should have just left the background white and it made me um sort of depressed about it, not really happy with with how it had come out um it just, the blue was just too overpowering. It, it was too overwhelming to the rest of the artwork and it didn't work. Like your eyes would just feel like they want to explode when you look at it. And I couldn't figure out how to navigate through, through that aspect until, I mean, I had sort of just said, okay, I need to figure out a way to make this work. And until I had um, seen a quote online that really made me think about a different way to approach it thinking like a sculptor removing the areas that weren't working removing the blue taking away the blue and the only way i could take away the blue was to add black yeah detailing to do on the monkey king's face and um, I'm going over the entire artwork and just looking for any small uh, inconsistencies or areas that I don't like and this can take quite a bit of time because sometimes I forget where things are or I almost get lost um, in in areas of my own artwork so I, I do need to go back and forth back and forth and just find the little areas that I want to fix up until it's perfect.
We are now coming to the end of this project. I am off to pick up a print of the artwork that I can keep and exhibit for future. And I'm going to get the original illustration framed for the client. And then it's all over. And I'll show you guys the, the final reveal of a couple of months worth of illustration work, what it all looks like. frame sort of talks to the work yeah Sometimes the flat one might be too boring doesn't, right doesn't, just doesn't talk yeah just the thin one right yeah. so what's the large one like show us what the large one is yeah okay it's only a few mil difference but, bit, but it makes a difference but you can see days later oh wow that matte colour and everything's just perfect ah oh, this is really awesome good, isn't it? yeah that looks awesome That one is the original, and then that one there is the print. Thanks for watching, guys. That is a behind the scenes look at my Monkey King vs. Goku illustration. I've got my print here, which I'll bring up once it stops raining. And I hope you enjoyed this video. See you guys in the next one. No.